helpful pistol. This is actually not a World War II era version. This is a new. Howdy y'all, it is Cody from the Keepers of Nerddom, and once again, it's my grandmother's couch, which means I am actually joined by my brother Kai. Hello. To talk about a wonderful, epic firearm that was very, very important to the U.S. in World War II, and that is the Colt 1911. A beautiful pistol. This is actually not a World War II era version. This is a newer one. Kai, I'll let you explain a little further, please. Yeah, this is just a, uh, a Remington. I can go ahead and like flip it over. It's a modern, yeah. modern reproduction of a Remington uh, 1911, and <clears throat> basically, it, for the most part, it is a 1911 A1 design with some of the improvements, like an extended tail here um, that kept the slide from biting your hand. Nice. But otherwise, it is it is a modern um, reproduction here, and. Just wanting to go over, basically, these were officially adopted in the U.S. military in 1911, hence the term 1911. Uh, for what you, they ended up being seen use in World War One, World War Two, um, and I believe it was up through the 80s or 90s um, until they were retired. So, what what caliber is a 1911? Uh, it's 45 ACP. Uh, and mean, so now, what do they use instead of uh, most 1911? Um, I don't, they've changed a lot, and I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it might be an FN pistol. Which fires what kind of rounds? Usually nine. nine so is pretty smaller standard. rounds, so you can have more shots, but a forty-five caliber That's pistol the big difference. Round. Um, nine, a lot of modern nine millimeters are double stack magazine, which means the magazine yeah. is, is nice and fat. So, we'll, um, so, whereas these magazines are very thin, uh, they're yeah. a single stack, so usually hold about seven rounds in those mags. Definitely so. less rounds, but very good in stopping power and effective in doing their job. It is a slow round compared to like the nine millimeter. Okay. Um, it's just, a, it's mass. It's a higher mass round. Right. But again, very interesting design. Um, the original one is purported to have been shot 6,000 times in the military trials. And with those military trials, they actually, uh, did it over two days, and any time the bar barrel or the gun itself just got too hot, they just dunk it in a, a bucket of water and just continue fantastic. shooting it. Uh, and it is purported that that original 1911 did not have any malfunctions. So, because um, I know 1911s are not necessarily known for sometimes their reliability, uh, this one has been fantastic after I uh, trashed the factory magazines. I oh, think. so you had factory magazines, and these are something else. Yeah, these are these are aftermarket. Okay. Um, I believe they are Springfield magazines because the the factory magazines I had were were not good, and I thought it was the gun, and I tried new magazines and haven't had really any problems since. Huh. So, um, so it was just the magazine just not loading it very well up into the gun. Yeah, and feeding like, right. It, it's very magazines. If the lips are on the top of the magazine are are off or the spring is not right, it can cause issues. Um, interesting factoid is when you know World War I came around, we could not produce enough 1911s quick enough. Yeah. And uh, so they contacted Colt and Smith and & Wesson and said, can you build us a revolver in 45 ACP uh, to supplement our, our handguns? So they went ahead and uh, produced a lot. It's a very interesting couple of pistols. I believe it was the Model 1917, hmm. Smith & Wesson and Colt. Um, very, very interesting because they shoot a semi-automatic round, not a typical revolver round. Gotcha. But, um, yeah, normally the Colts came with uh, walnut checkered grips. I just replaced these with a, a rubber over-molded grip. Yeah, it's very... Uh, I love this rubbery feel because it's more comfortable in your hand. It is much more comfortable. And other than that, I mean, it is it is a fantastic design in a lot of ways. A lot of ways it is antiquated. Um, it's more difficult to take it apart than yeah. a lot of modern guns. Um, you do have to, and it, this is clear. I can You can look down in the barrel. There is nothing there because I am going to point the... Point the pistol at the camera. Okay. Uh, you have to have a special tool 
that depresses this and then turns this nut to hmm. unlock the barrel so you can take the slide off and take the barrel off and everything like that. It's very interesting that you say antiquated, and yet this just looks like the quintessential firearm pistol that you think of. Oh, and then I'm trying to depress the trigger. This has a grip safety on it. Really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is, yeah, it does seem like the quintessential pistol, and it was designed by John Moses Browning, who basically has designed, like, some of the most popular gun models ever uh, the browning high power was something that he decided later on and a lot of people would say that that's was the the father of most modern firearms so, so. Real, real quick before we go shoot this thing at some some trees target stuff speculate why why was john browning so good at designing rifles what would you say um i think he and just had a, other firearms i think he just had a gift for how things were were built um you know, it's really it, it, a lot of the old style firearms. I, I know we you posted a video of uh, me shooting the BAR. That is a Browning design. I mean, the Browning A5 shotgun. Um, a lot of the more recent Winchesters, Winchester 1892, 94, and 95, I believe are all Browning designs. He just had a gift. I, I Beyond that, I don't know how else to say it he just was he was a genius when it came but to but he was de- he was always involved in the designing of the guns yes okay like Crazy. and that's what like i believe i'd have to look again but i do believe that the 45 acp was designed by him for this gun hmm. or at least for a, maybe a maybe a prior model but he was he was constantly like so he even designed the ammunition of 45 acp possibly possibly I, i'll okay. have to look at that again but okay. yes he did the, I do know that for sure he did design some cartridges for different Cool. Guns. Well, that's a great spot to conclude this part of information, and then let's go fire the 1911. We'll see you in a minute. Howdy, y'all. It's Cody again from the Keepers of Nerdum. We're back for the second like part of this video. We're going to be firing the Colt 1911 at some targets over here. We've got a little uh, round thing, and then this red thing, and then some tree stumps. So, Kai, have at it. Nice. Yep, it did break off. <laughs> cool. Good? Yep. Shooting over to the right. <laughs> 